Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Italian ebook before it's gone. Hi guys, welcome to ItalianPod101.com. My name is Ilaria, nice to meet you. And today we are going to talk about the 20 travel phrases you should know. So something quite usual if it happens that, for instance, you are going to travel in my country in Italy. So let's start. Potrei avere una mappa? Could I get a map? Potrei avere una mappa? Could I get a map? Is actually something really useful, especially if you find yourself in a situation where you don't know where you are and you want to ask someone help. Let's say you're going to a local shop and you say, Potrei avere una mappa? Parla inglese? Do you speak English? Another useful phrase is, Parla inglese? Do you speak English? This is something really, really useful when you are abroad and, and you want to know if someone speaks English and you say, Parla inglese? C'è un autobus dall'aeroporto alla città? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? C'è un autobus dall'aeroporto alla città? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? This is specifically from the airport to the city. So, dall'aeroporto alla città, from the airport to the city. Dov'è la stazione? Where is the train station? Dov'è la stazione? Where is the train station? So in this case, uh, dove la stazione is a bit generic in Italian because you can say where is the train station, which is dove la stazione dei treni, but you can also say dove la, stra- dove la stazione del bus, where is the autobus station, you know. You should be like specific because people they might ask you which station are you looking for, train station or bus station, because they are quite different, sometimes they are in different places in Italy. Mi scusi, qual è la tariffa? Excuse me, what's the fare? Mi scusi, qual è la tariffa? Excuse me, what's the fare? You can also say, mi scusi, quanto costa? È questo l'autobus giusto per l'aeroporto? Is this the right bus for the airport? È questo l'autobus giusto per l'aeroporto? Is this the right bus for the airport? You can also say this with trains, with any kind of public transport really, you know? And also, è questo il treno giusto per l'aeroporto? La connessione wifi è gratuita? Is the Wi-Fi free? La connessione Wi-Fi è gratuita? Is the Wi-Fi free? Then you can check your maps, you know, watch for public transport yourself, you know. Uh, you can also say, avete Wi-Fi? Which is actually pretty much the same, they will understand what you're talking about. Ha qualche posto libero per stasera? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Ha qualche posto libero per stasera? Do you have any vacancies tonight? In this case, you are talking about hotel rooms or, uh, you know, any kind of um, place where you can spend the night, where you are abroad as, a, as an hotel or a B&B or an apartment, you know. And you can actually say, avete qualche posto libero? Potrei spostarmi in una camera diversa? Could I move to a different room? Potrei spostarmi in una camera diversa? Could I move to a different room? So let's say you, you just find an hotel, but they give you like a, a very small room and you need more things and you can just say, avete un'altra camera? You know, they will understand that you want to change your room, basically. Ho prenotato. I have a reservation. Ho prenotato. I have a reservation. So basically when you say ho prenotato means that you have booked. Potremmo avere il menu, per favore? Could we have the menu, please? So this is about the food. In English you say, could we have the menu, please? And so in Italian you say, potremmo avere il menu, per favore? Potremmo, if you are like loads of people, but if you are by yourself, you say, potrei avere il menu, per favore? I mean, they will understand exactly what you're talking about. Potrei avere il conto? Could I have the check? Potrei avere il conto? Could I have the check? The check is the bill. You finish to eat and you want to know how much your 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 the, the amount I mean uh, that you have to pay for. So you say, potrei avere il conto per favore? Sono allergico alle arachidi. I am allergic to peanuts. Sono allergico alle arachidi. I am allergic to peanuts. 
This is very important, especially if you're allergic to some food, to avoid any problems when you are around for your holidays, you know? And this is actually a very good example when you say, sono allergico. Allergico means that you have an allergy, so you are not able to get this food. So, sono allergico alle arachidi. Sono allergico al gluten, which means like, I'm allergic to gluten, for instance, you know? And so on. Acqua, per favore. Water, please. Acqua, per favore. Water, please. Quanto costa? How much is this? Quanto costa? How much is this? Also, you can say, mi potrebbe dire quanto costa, per favore, which means like, could I, could I know how much is that, please, you know? Ne vorrei dieci di questi. I'd like ten of these. Ne vorrei dieci di questi. I'd like ten of these which is like, um, let's say, you, 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 you sow something and you want to know just the quantity, you want more than one, you know, and you say, ne vorrei, ne vorrei uno, like, I want one, ne vorrei due, I want two, and so on, you know, and let's say in this case, it's, ne vorrei dieci. Vorrei questo. I'd like this. Vorrei questo. There is just one particular thing that just grab your attention and you say, I want this. Vorrei questo. Potrebbe farmi uno sconto? Could you give me a discount? Potrebbe farmi uno sconto? Could you give me a discount? So this is quite important, especially if you if you get around quite often and you want to have discounts on things. Let's say you want to buy you, you buy like a bunch of things and you want a discount from the seller and you say posso avere lo sconto per favore? Accettate le carte di credito? Do you take credit card? Accettate la carta di credito? Do you take credit card? Potrebbe farmi una foto, per favore? Could you take a picture of me, please? Potrebbe farmi una foto, per favore? Could you take a picture of me, please? That might be happening, you know, you are in front of a very important monument and you want someone to make a photo of you. And then you say, Potrebbe farmi una foto, per favore? With this nice question, we actually reached the end of our lesson, guys. Thanks very much for uh, listening to us, as usual. Please watch us, comment, subscribe and give us some tips about what you want to know next in our lovely Italian language. From italianpod101.com, that's it. Thanks very much for listening and take care. Bye-bye. Have a nice day, guys. Bye-bye. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Ok, Mario, ho spento il telefono. Brava, così si fa. Ora concentrati sui clienti. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, come posso servirla? Mi servirebbe del pane per celiaci. Abbiamo sia il pane alla soia che quello senza glutine. Quale le do? Va bene, prendo entrambi, grazie. Va bene, glieli incarto. Vorrei sia l'uno che l'altro in bustine separate, per favore. Ecco a lei. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Concentrarsi. To focus, concentrate. Concentrarsi. Concentrarsi. And next we have... Pane. Bread. Pa-ne. Pane. Next we have... Celiaco. Celiac. Ce-li-a-co. Celiaco. And the next word we shall see is... Glutine. Gluten. Glu-ti-ne. Glutine. And next we have... Entrambi. Both. In... Entrambi. Entrambi. And today's last word is... 
Incartare. To wrap, wrap up. In car ta re. Incartare. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. Ok, Mario, ho spento il telefono. Brava, così si fa. Ora concentrati sui clienti. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, come posso servirla? Mi servirebbe del pane per celiaci. Abbiamo sia il pane alla soia che quello senza glutine. Quale le do? Va bene, prendo entrambi, grazie. Va bene, glieli incarto. Vorrei sia l'uno che l'altro in bustine separate, per favore. Ecco a lei. This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you will review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. È tuo questo catalogo? Wow, guarda che bei posti! Sì, oggi sono andato in agenzia, ho pure incontrato Anna. Ah, davvero? Va in vacanza anche lei? Non lo so, non le ho chiesto. So che ha intenzione di studiare un po' all'estero tramite il progetto Erasmus. Forse in agenzia cercava solo delle informazioni. Eh sì, perché del progetto Erasmus se ne occupa l'università, giusto? Esatto. Devi compilare tanti documenti e seguire un sacco di procedure noiose. Sì, mi ricordo quando lo fece nostro cugino qualche anno fa. Dai, accendi il computer che prenotiamo online i biglietti per la mostra. Now you will hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Pure. Tu. Also. Pu. Re. Pure. Estero. Foreign. Abroad. Es. Te. Ro. Estero. Progetto. Project. Plan. Pro. Ge. To. Progetto. Occuparsi. To deal. Take care. O. Occuparsi. Occuparsi. Compilare. To fill in. Complete. Compilare. Compilare. Procedura. Procedure. Proceeding. Praxis. Procedura. Procedura. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. È tuo questo catalogo? Wow, guarda che bei posti! Sì, oggi sono andato in agenzia. Ho pure incontrato Anna. Ah, davvero? Va in vacanza anche lei? Non lo so, non le ho chiesto. So che ha intenzione di studiare un po' all'estero tramite il progetto Erasmus. Forse in agenzia cercava solo delle informazioni. Eh sì, perché del progetto Erasmus se ne occupa l'università, giusto? Esatto. Devi compilare tanti documenti e seguire un sacco di procedure noiose. Sì, mi ricordo quando lo fece nostro cugino qualche anno fa. Dai, accendi il computer che prenotiamo online i biglietti per la mostra. This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson.
Hi everyone, welcome to ItalianPod101.com. My name is Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. And in this video, we're going to talk about some shopping phrases. Fare shopping. Fare shopping. So as the title says already, shopping is a word that became normal in Italian as well. So when I say, mm, ho voglia di fare shopping, I feel like doing some shopping, I feel like going for shopping, it's completely fine. Fare shopping. If you want to say that in a more Italian way, something else that we say is fare compere. So to make purchases, to make buys, <laughs> to buy. Fare compere or fare spese, to make expenses, <laughs> literally, <laughs> do expenses. Fare spese or andare per negozi, where negozi is shops, andare is to go. So to go through shops, to go among shops. Andare per negozi, it means that I want to go to one shop and the other, right? While if I say fare la spesa, so singular, la spesa, le spese, okay? Fare la spesa means to go grocery only, okay? Fare la spesa means that you're buying something that you need to eat or like for the house. That being said, something that you will need like the moment you step into a shop, of course you say hi, buongiorno, buongiorno, and then the word is commesso or commessa, it's the clerk, the staff, right? Commesso, if it's male, commessa, if it's female. And it's general, so like you don't have to specify if it's a waiter or if it's like a cashier or something. You just go for commesso or commessa. And commessi is the plural, of course. So when il commesso or la commessa asks you, when they see you coming in, they will probably ask you, hai bisogno? Hai bisogno? which means, do you need something? Can I help you with something? Cerchi qualcosa? Are you looking for something? Cerca, in case it's more formal, right? Cerca qualcosa? Qualcosa is something. In this case, if you want to be helped, you can say, si, sí, cerco un regalo. Yes, I'm looking for a gift. Si, sí, vorrei, yes, I'd like, vorrei due mele. I'd like two apples, okay? While if you're really going for shopping, which means like you just want to look around, you can say, no, grazie, no, thank you. Sto solo guardando. I'm just looking. Sto solo guardando. This is really helpful because people will come and ask you. And if you want to take your time, just go with sto solo guardando. And then later on, you can still ask them if you really need something or if you can't find what you're looking for, right? Let's assume you found something that you like and you want to know how much it is. Quanto costa? How much does it cost? Quanto costa? And then they will tell you the price, right? Due euro. Be careful because euro doesn't change the word. It's never plural. It's not due euri. It's still euro. Okay, costa due euro, costa dieci euro, costa un euro. And then you can be like, no, troppo caro, too expensive. Caro is expensive, troppo is too much, right? Too, too expensive, troppo caro. Now you may want to try and ask for a discount, right? So you can say, posso avere, can I have, a sconto? A discount. Sconto. It's kind of similar, right? Sconto. Discount. Sconto. C'è lo sconto? Is there a discount? Posso avere uno sconto? Can I have some discount? Now, when you're in a shop and the price is there already, you don't ask for that, right? That's a normal rule, I guess, everywhere in the world. While if you're at a market, or the price is not shown, you can ask for a discount. It's not like the rule for you to ask, but you can try and then you'll see. While when you see the word saldi, saldi, it means that there are some sales going on, okay? Saldi, saldi. 
So you may want to plan your trip in Italy, this is a tip, uh, when Saldi are on, which is in July, August, or of course January, after the Christmas period. Saldi. So if you don't want to say that that's too expensive, but still want to ask for something cheaper, you can say, c'è qualcosa, is there di più economico? Cheaper, più economico. Economico is cheap, so più economico is cheaper. Is there something cheaper? C'è qualcosa di più economico? Just asking, you know? <laughs> for example, when you're looking for a gift, you can give an idea of how much you want to spend. Vorrei spendere. I'd like to spend. Vorrei spendere. Intorno, around, ai 20 euro. I'd like to spend around 20 euros. Vorrei spendere intorno ai 20 euro. 20 euros. You can change the number according to your budget. Then when you decide, you can say Prendo questo. I'll take this one. Prendo, prendere, from take. I'll take this. Prendo questo. And la commessa will probably ask you Qualcos'altro? Qualcos'altro? Something else? And you can say no, thank you. No, grazie. Basta così. This is enough. Basta così. That will be all. Basta così. Or sì, anche blah blah blah. Yes, something too. Anche means too. And this is just about vocabulary basically, right? But something that is really specific of Italian is, for example, when you're queuing, there are times when a number is given, so you have to take a ticket with a number on it and wait for your turn, right? If there's not a number, for example, at the market and you're just like lining up, waiting with people, but people don't really line up, they're just waiting there, okay? The person that is selling at some point may ask this. A chi tocca? A chi tocca? Toccare means to touch, right? And chi is who. A chi tocca literally means who is the one that has to be touched. Okay, <laughs> but don't worry, no one will touch you. It just means who's next, whose turn it is. We can also say, è il mio turno, it's my turn, turno, tocca a me. It's my turn, again, but literally, <laughs> it is time for me to be touched. <laughs> but that doesn't mean what it means literally, okay? Remember this? Because I find it really funny when I think about it, but it just means my time, it's my turn. Tocca a me. You have to imagine that the turn is something physical and now it's touching you, like, go for it. It's on you now. So the turn is touching you, okay? Tocca a me. Related to this, sometimes you can see something like prendere il numero per essere serviti. Take the number, take the ticket to be served, okay? Prendere il numero per essere serviti, to be served. Let's say you found something to buy, now it's time to pay. Pagare, pagare, to pay. Posso pagare con carta? Can I pay by card? Can I pay with a card? Posso pagare con carta? No, solo contanti. No, cash only. Contanti is cash. Solo contanti. Nowadays it's common to use the card in many places, but it's not as common as in America, for example. So yeah, be ready to always have some cash on you, especially if you go to markets, which in my opinion are the best place to buy stuff in Italy, because you can see people talking to each other, screaming sometimes, but it's really lively, okay? So yeah, always have some cash on you, not too much, because you don't want to risk it, but... <laughs> and something else that they may ask you is, Hai moneta? A moneta? Hai, informal, a, formal. Moneta is coins. So do you have some coins? Let's assume you're paying by cash and you just have a big note. Banconota. Banconota is note. They ask you for some coins. Moneta. Moneta. Of course, this is just in general, like 
how the flow of buying of shopping would go with some phrases here and there there are many specific words that depends on the shop that you're in but as last i want you to remember this you can see that sometimes in shops but it's a general rule okay controllare il resto prima di uscire controllare check il resto the change prima before di uscire exiting so check your change before going out okay i mean this is a general rule but it's always nice to remember this controllare il resto resto change if you want to learn more essential phrases that you would need in a daily conversation in italian just click the link in the description and download our pdf lessons thank you for watching remember to like and subscribe and i'll see you soon ciao ciao bye bye hello everyone welcome back to italianpod101.com my name is desi mi chiamo desi mi chiamo desi and in this video we're gonna talk about money so keep watching and discover about living costs in italy il costo della vita in italia il costo della vita in italia so the first thing that you need to live in a country or to live anywhere else in the world is a place to stay at right so let's talk about rent rent is affitto affitto in italian to rent is affittare affittare the owner is called proprietario proprietario i know this is hard to say but it's also kind of satisfying to pronounce it proprietario proprietario the owner while you the tenant would be called affittuario affittuario the one that lives in the one who rents from affittare which is to rent right the price of the rent really depends on the city and the region that you are in and of course if it's in the city it's more expensive than outside but on average we can say that it's 10 euros per meter square per square meters this that means that for a house that it's about 50 square meters you're supposed to pay at least 600 euros okay some more useful vocabulary can be contratto contratto contract that you have to sign to have a rent and something that you want to confirm before you sign is the amount of spese condominiali spese condominiali the condo phase buildings expenses because sometimes they're not specified and that's when you will pay more than what you expected which is not a nice surprise so better ask before about spese condominiali spese condominiali which are usually about 50 sometimes even more but it depends on the building of course then we have the bills so bollette 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 are the bills we have acqua water acqua gas it's just gas and for electricity we don't really say elettricità but luce luce the light luce gas acqua that's the three main things that you have to pay for and maybe we want to also put the internet which is internet in italian as well and we can count about let's say 100 euros for that 100 euro 100 euros 100 euro of course that also really depends on the usage that you do of it like how much you spend how much energy you use um but that's also something that is going to be cut if you can share the house with someone right something else that we need to talk about is transportations trasporti trasporti here too it really depends on the city it goes from 20 to 50 euros per month for the monthly pass for buses and trains so let's say 50 in the worst case scenario and the pass is called abbonamento 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 mensile monthly pass mensile 
while settimanale, settimanale is weekly, the weekly pass. Abbonamento settimanale. Maybe you are using a car and one liter of gasoline, which is benzina, benzina is always around one euro and forty cents, sometimes even more, rarely less. As for food, considering that the classic Italian breakfast is about, on average, two euros, due euro, okay, for caffè or cappuccino and brioche, and one euro point five for a liter of milk, latte, two euros and fifty for a dozen of eggs, una dozzina di uova, if we consider that a pizza can go from 3.5, and I'm not talking about a slice, but a whole pizza, and you may be wondering why that has to be considered, and if you're gonna live here, you're gonna get like us, meaning you're gonna have pizza at least once a week. That being said, it goes from 3.5 euros till 10, let's say, one pizza, it depends on the restaurant, and considering that fast food is around maybe 8 euros, I'm talking about the whole menu, of course, then you can spend less, and that a restaurant can be, let's say, 20, 25 euros per person minimum. A study proved that on average, one person spends 250 euros per month, then, of course, it depends on the kind of life that you're living, like if you go to the restaurant every day, that's gonna be way more expensive, while if you are on a budget, maybe you don't go out at all, you don't even eat pizza, so of course those are things that always need to be considered, and also keep in mind that south is usually cheaper than the north, but that being said, my tip is, no matter where you are, to go and look for markets. We have markets, i mercati, mercati, every morning, every day of the week, there are markets, you just need to find out where. If you're in a small city, there is the possibility that they only hold that once or twice a week, but there has to be one, okay? And if you go there, it's gonna be cheaper and things are fresher as well. And lastly, let's talk about entertainment. Let's say that you want to go to the cinema, il cinema, andare al cinema will cost you about 7 euros, 7 to 8, just for the ticket, and if it's 3D or something, 10 euros, and I'm not talking about any discounts here, okay, just the regular ticket. While if you're going to a museum, that's also about 10 euros, right? Here my tip is to look for not even coupons, even though there are some, but just for the days. For the cinema, usually it's Wednesday, but for museums, depending on the city, in my city, for example, in Turin, the first Tuesday of the month, they're free. So, that's my tip there. Just gather information, just check. Go to the info point in your city, check online. There are always days when there are discounts. Discounts, by the way, which is another important word if we were talking about budget, is sconti, sconti. So, let's try to sum the expenses. Le spese, spese. If we have a fitto, we said 600 euros, but let's say you are gonna split it with someone. So let's say 300 euros. Then we add 100 for bills, okay? Quindi affitto 300 euro. Plus 100 euro per le spese, for utilities, 400, right? 400. Let's say 50 euro, 50 euros for transportations and 250 for food, 250 cibo, and let's add a uh, 100, 100 for entertainment, so divertimenti. With this only, we're about 800 euros, right? We're around 800 euros, 800 euro. But we're not counting any expenses for daily life and, let's say, clothes, and if you need to buy books for school or anything else, right? So we're just talking about the bare minimum, 800 euros, and salaries are usually around, let's say, 1,200, 1,200, 1,200, starting at, it should, then sometimes it's even less, and I'm talking about a full-time, 
So yeah, this is just a general idea. Then of course there are many, many variants that have to be considered, but let's say that to live in Italy you need at least 800 euros a month. 800 euro al mese. Although there are many other details that can be considered, I hope this video gave you a general idea and some useful vocabulary for your life in Italy, for your vita in Italia. And if you want to learn more useful expressions for your future life in Italy, make sure to subscribe and sign up for your free lifetime account on italianpod101.com. Thank you for watching, grazie, and I hope to see you soon. Ci vediamo presto. Ciao ciao, bye bye. Hi guys, welcome to italianpod101.com. My name is Ilaria, nice to meet you or nice to see you again. I'm sorry, this is my dog. <laughs> well, today we are going to talk about the top 10 attractions in Italy. I'm quite happy about this lesson because um, I love Italy as um, a holiday. Um, I mean, it's my country, yeah, but it's also very famous because of its uh, variety of touristic attractions. So very happy uh, to start this lesson, guys. So let's see. Capri. Capri, Capri, Capri. L'estate scorsa ho visitato l'isola di Capri. Last summer I was on Capri Island. So this is not exactly my case. I haven't been to Capri, but I've been to Naples and I can tell you that um, it's an amazing city. There was one famous actor, Italian actor, that used to say that Naples was like um, an open theatre you know, because it's so unique, you know. So if you've never been to the south of Italy, uh, Naples and the Amalfi Coast with Capri Island is definitely something that I suggest you to do. Cinque Terre, Cinque Terre, Cinque Terre, Cinque Terre. Se vai Liguria, non perdere le Cinque Terre. If you go to Liguria, don't miss Cinque Terre. Cinque Terre is um, a very famous part of Liguria and uh, there, there are actually um, many places uh, that are part of what is called Cinque Terre. So if you've never been to Liguria, it's a very small region, but very with a lot of natural environment. So I just suggest you to go there. Colosseo. Colosseum. Colosseo. Colosseum. Il Colosseo recentemente ha subito un importante restauro. Recently, the Colosseum went through an important restoration. By the way, I've been just to Rome a couple of uh, months ago, I think, and he has been like, still, uh, that's, that place is, you can breathe the history, you know, it's just amazing. Costiera Amalfitana. Amalfi Coast. Costiera Amalfitana, Amalfi Coast. Navigare lungo la costiera Amalfitana è così romantico. Sailing along the Amalfi Coast is so romantic. By the way, my mom, she had a first uh, honeymoon in Amalfi Coast. And many people decide to go there for uh, their honeymoon because it's truly romantic. Fori Romani, Roman Forum, Fori Romani, Roman Forum. Dovremmo prenotare per visitare i fori romani ed evitare una lunga fila. We should make a reservation to visit the Roman Forum and avoid a long queue. So, Roman Forum are definitely something I must see in Rome. If you happen to be there, you have to uh, book your ticket because as it's true that if you, you, you might get stuck in a queue and lo lo losing long, long, lots of time, you know, so better to make a reservation because it's a must-see place. Pantheon. 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 Amo guardare il cielo attraverso la cupola del Pantheon. I love looking at the sky through the Pantheon Dome. I've done that when I've been to Rome, as I told you before. So I've been inside the Pantheon. There's no, like, uh, a lot of queue and it's free. So uh, it's definitely a massive place. Piazza San Pietro. San Peter Square. Piazza San Pietro. San Peter Square. Il mercoledì 
e la domenica mattina, Piazza San Pietro è piena di fedeli. On Wednesday and Sunday morning, St. Peter Square is full of believers. Very famous, St. Peter Square. Very famous. Very beautiful. Um, the architecture is just surprising, really. It's so it's a very big space and uh, so meticul meticulously done. It's unbelievable, really. Pompei, 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 Pompei. Il vulcano Vesuvio ha fermato la vita di Pompei per sempre. The Vesuvius Vulcano has stopped Pompei's life forever. Torre di Pisa, Tower of Pisa, Torre di Pisa, Tower of Pisa. Trovo incredibile come la Torre di Pisa stia ancora in piedi. I think it's incredible how the Tower of Pisa still remains standing. So this is actually, uh, I think that this is everyone's thought uh, about the Tower of Pisa because it's unbelievable, really. I've been there as well, so pretty amazing to see live. Venezia, Venice, Venezia, Venice. Il mio sogno è andare a Venezia per il carnevale. My dream is going to Venice for carnival. Amazing. I, I have never been there for the carnival. I've been to Venice not during the carnival period, but there must be really something amazing because of all the costumes and everything just respects the tradition. So something I, I believe truly amazing to see. We actually reached the end of our lesson, guys, on italianpod101.com. Here is Ilaria again. So thanks very much for listening. We are always here to know and what you like to know in our nice Italian language. So thanks very much for listening and please comment, subscribe at italianpod101.com. Thank you guys and uh, have you all a nice day. Take care. Bye bye. Do you feel like you don't speak enough Italian? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask where something is located. After watching this video, you'll be able to ask for directions. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Dov'è il supermercato? È laggiù. Once more with the English translation. Dov'è il supermercato? Where is the supermarket? È laggiù. It's over there. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, where is place? The pattern is, dov'è place. For example, where is the supermarket? Dov'è il supermercato? Dov'è il supermercato? Now, how do you answer this question? È laggiù. Listen to it again. È laggiù. È laggiù. Here are a few more places you can use with the same pattern. The supermarket. Il supermercato. Il supermercato. The supermarket. Il supermercato. The bank. La banca. La banca. The bank. La banca. The bathroom. Il bagno. Il bagno. The bathroom. Il bagno. The mall. 
il centro commerciale. Il centro commerciale. The mall. Il centro commerciale. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Dov'è la banca? È laggiù. Where is the bank? Dov'è la banca? It's over there. È laggiù. Dov'è il bagno? È laggiù. Where is the bathroom? Dov'è il bagno? It's over there. È laggiù. Dov'è il centro commerciale? È laggiù. Where is the mall? Dov'è il centro commerciale? It's over there. È laggiù. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, where is place? Dov'è? Place. And how do you answer it? È laggiù. Imagine you're looking for the bank. Do you remember how to say, the bank? La banca. La banca. Say, where is the bank? Dov'è la banca? Now, ask where the bank is and answer saying the bank is over there. Dov'è la banca? È laggiù. Now, imagine you're looking for the bathroom. Do you remember how to say the bathroom? Il bagno. Il bagno. Say, where is the bathroom? Dov'è il bagno? Now ask where the bathroom is and answer saying the bathroom is over there. Dov'è il bagno? È laggiù. Now imagine you're looking for the mall. Do you remember how to say the mall? Il centro commerciale. Il centro commerciale. Say, where is the mall? Dov'è il centro commerciale? Now ask where the mall is and answer saying the mall is over there. Dov'è il centro commerciale? È laggiù. In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to ask the location of a place. You're now able to ask for directions like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Ask your fellow learners directions to a place. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the word bank, your personal vocabulary collection where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools. Hi guys, welcome to ItalianPod101.com. My name is Ilaria, nice to see you or nice to meet you. Um, today we are going to talk about travel. So the 
top 10 ways to prepare your travel. Of course, in my language, in Italian. So let's start. Scegliere la tua destinazione. To choose your destination. Scegliere la tua destinazione. To choose your destination. Io e le mie amiche abbiamo scelto la nostra destinazione per il prossimo viaggio. My friends and I choose our destination for the next trip. I love to travel with my girlfriends and it is just one of the best thing ever. You know, and I like to organize. I, I maybe like more to organize than, than, you know, the travel itself or this kind of feeling that you're getting ready, you know, to go somewhere new uh, with your friends, you know. Risparmiare denaro. To save money. Risparmiare denaro. To save money. Per il viaggio dei miei sogni ho bisogno di risparmiare denaro. For my dream trip, I need to save money. Of course, I mean, you need money to travel. You can also do some very nice um, voluntary travel and uh, um, so you don't have to, like, to spend lots of money, but you still do something really nice for the other people. You know what I mean? Prenotare un volo. To book a flight. Prenotare un volo. To book a flight. Hai già prenotato il volo del ritorno? Have you already booked your return flight? You can also say, um, if you need to book a flight, for instance, you know. Devo prenotare un volo. I have to book for a flight. Devo prenotare un volo. And then you can say your destination, for instance, Rome. Devo prenotare un volo per Roma. Fare una ricerca sui prezzi. To research the costs. Fare una ricerca sui prezzi. To research the costs. Mio marito ha fatto una curata ricerca sui prezzi londinesi. My husband has carefully researched the costs in London. Uh, you can actually uh, also save money uh, if you get to know, uh, you, you just research places and things, you know, uh, use vouchers and things like that. I mean, discounts, you know, um, you can easily uh, spend less money uh, if you try to research for the best costs, you know, the best offers, basically. Chiedere le ferie. To request vacation time. Chiedere le ferie. To request vacation time. Non si può partire senza chiedere le ferie in, in anticipo. We can't leave without requesting vacation time in advance. Chiedere le ferie, ferie, is the word that defines the holiday time, ferie. Prenotare la sistemazione, to book accommodations. Prenotare la sistemazione, to book accommodations. Se viaggio con i bambini è fondamentale prenotare la giusta sistemazione. If I travel with children, it is essential to book the right accommodation. If you are parents, I bet you did that. Ottenere una patente di guida internazionale. To obtain an international driving license. Ottenere una patente di guida internazionale. To obtain an international driving license. Non so ancora come ottenere la patente di guida internazionale. I still don't know how to obtain an international driving license. You can actually, I think that you can, um, in uh, um, uh, European countries, you can use the same one. Uh, but of course, if you want to drive outside Europe, you might need an international driving license. Rinnovare il tuo passaporto. To renew your passport. Rinnovare il tuo passaporto. To renew your passport. Hai rinnovato il tuo passaporto per andare in Asia? Have you renewed your passport to go to Asia? Be careful about this detail. Acquistare l'assicurazione di viaggio. To buy travel insurance. Acquistare l'assicurazione di viaggio. To buy travel insurance. Non dimenticate di acquistare l'assicurazione di viaggio, ragazzi. Don't forget to buy travel insurance, guys. If you're especially going for a long trip, um, many also travel agencies, they suggest you to do something like that because you are covered in case of any kind of uh, thing happening, you know. So bear in mind this point. Ottenere un visto. To get a visa. Ottenere un visto. To get a visa. 
i cittadini europei non hanno bisogno di ottenere un visto per spostarsi in Europa. European citizens don't need to get a visa to move in Europe. That's the reason why I told you before about driving license. I don't think that is necessary uh, in Europe itself. Oh, outside Europe, of course. Um, so anyway, but you, you'll ask anyway. I mean, when you actually book a travel, you, you might know exactly if you need a visa to get to that place or not. So I hope these kind of uh, sentences, they were useful to you guys. Uh, and now we actually re reach the end of our lesson on italianpod101.com. Here is Ilaria. Thanks again for listening. Please subscribe, comment, tell us what you want to hear in, a, in, a, in our nice Italian language. And I thank you uh, very much again. Take care always. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Italian ebook before it's gone.